Hi, my name is Phil from Radio.co and welcome to our Radio.co product demo. In this video, I'm going to guide you through all the basics of getting your very own radio station online and on air. In this video, I'm going to cover such things as how to upload your media, how to build playlists and how to schedule those playlists for broadcasting. And the best part of all, it's super easy to do with our software. So let's get started. So this is your radio.co dashboard or your homepage. And what this is, is this is just a general overview of what's going on your station. Now to get to this point, it's actually incredibly easy. All you need to do is visit our website, head to our pricing page, find which of our plans that you want to subscribe to. You can change obviously the, the exchange rate, the currency here, and each of our plans offers a trial. So activate your free seven day trial and it literally takes about two or three minutes to get set up. We offer it in monthly and yearly subscriptions too. So just pick the right package, the right trial for you, follow the instructions on screen and you'll then be prompted to log in. And when you do, you will see this, your dashboard. So a little bit of a, a tour around what you can see here. So the most important thing on here is this. Now, currently it says off air because, well, I'm off air. I'm not broadcasting anything. Now, I already have content uploaded to my account and you will have a very, very soon. But what I would do is upload some tracks first before you turn this on. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, when you are ready to go, all you do is click on this button here. And you'll see your station then turns on automatically and begins broadcasting whatever you've scheduled or anything that you have in your you know, auto DJ playlist and, and more on that very, very soon. Uh, now, the software itself is all entirely cloud based. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that nothing needs to be installed or downloaded onto your computer. You will just create a Radio.co account as I showed you, you know, how you go about that. And yeah, within a couple of minutes, you'll be logged in and you'll be able to connect to your Radio.co account from any computer in the world, you know, from anywhere in the world. So nothing needs to be downloaded or installed, first of all. And the other thing that it does is it means that, you know, we are the ones that power your radio station for you. So you don't need to have a computer constantly connected to the internet in order to do that. As soon as you turn your station on air, we begin broadcasting it for you and keeping it on air 24 seven on your behalf. Right, this information at the top here, this is for live broadcasting. So this is where it says connection status, which what that basically means is, are you a host currently connected to the software to do a live broadcast? Now I'm not doing a show at the moment, which is why it says not connected, but if I was, I would need to change that. So it says live or on air or connected, something to that effect. Now, to get there, there are two different ways for you, depending if you're a Windows or a Mac user. Now, I'm doing this demonstration from a Mac device, so the only option I have are these, the host, port, and password. These are unique to you as a user, so every single user on your Radio.co account will have their own unique information here. And that's just direct access to the server, and that's what you enter into a broadcasting software or an encoder in order to connect live and go live from here. Uh, now, if you're a Mac user, we typically recommend two different products. First of all, there is Butt or Broadcast using this tool. It's called very simple piece of software to use, and it communicates with Radio.co to tell it that you're broadcasting live and this is the device I'm using to broadcast live. And we also have our very own broadcasting tool if you are a Windows user. Uh, you'll find that option here if you are logging in from a Windows computer. Download that and you open it up each time you broadcast live. And if you're a Mac user, we also have a, a second piece of software that we recommend using called Audio Hijack. It is a paid app, it costs about $40 I believe, I could be wrong, um, but uh, what that will do is that's a fantastic piece of software that allows you to connect various different inputs and turn it into a one single output, such as having a fantastic piece of software that Spotify or maybe a guest you have uh, via Zoom, connecting them into one single uh, output for your station. You'll find more information about all of these on our help center at help.radio.co. What is this information? Well, this will be relevant depending on whichever subscription plan you subscribe to. So we have five in total. Each of them give you all the essential tools for broadcasting. They just differ in terms of storage space for your content. 
or bandwidth for your listening hours or listeners or that's really concurrent listenership the maximum number of people you can have listening at the exact same time they also differ in some exclusive features and perks and i'll go through some of those during the course of this demonstration but just pick the right plan for you from our pricing page and you'll see exactly what each of our plans entails here you'll see exactly what each of them includes and each uh, well all of the features you will have in each of our trials as well so you're never going to miss out on exactly finding out what Radio.co is all about. You can also upgrade and downgrade your plan at any time you like as well. So I'll show you how to do that right at the end. And then this just shows you what's currently playing or what's coming up next or what shows we may have had scheduled here. Okay, so if I go to media, this is where you'll probably go first as this is where you upload your content. And when it comes to content, you can upload anything you like, whether it's music, podcasts, interviews, jingles, adverts, entire pre-recorded shows. It's up to you, as long as the media you are uploading is MP3 or AAC. As long as it's one of those two, you can upload it. And how you do that is by going to Add Media at the top here. And you'll see this. Just click on that option and you'll be able to choose anything that has been uploaded to your computer or your hard drive. And just select any of those and then they'll all be uploaded in a large file, a larger list of files just like this. Uh, we also have FTP. If you're unfamiliar with that, I like to think of it as a more aggressive, bullyish way of uploading media. It allows you to connect one server to another and it allows you to really, you know, bombard your server with dozens or even hundreds of tracks to upload at one single time. So you can upload thousands of tracks overnight, depending if you've got a good internet connection, of course. So it's a very good way of uploading large files or large batches of files. And you can also upload tracks via Google Drive and Dropbox as well. And I'll show you how to do that uh, towards the end of this demonstration. Uh, OK, so you've uploaded tracks. They all appear in the list that you uploaded them, like so. And you'll see as I'm scrolling through, I have a number of these tracks that have little uh, brightly coloured labels attached to them. Now, what they are is they are what we call tags. And these first and foremost help you organise your media. So if you are uploading a lot of varying content, such as different genres maybe here, or perhaps uh, you, know, you want to find, identify adverts or podcasts or jingles, it's a way of helping you keep on top of what you've got. So if you are uploading lots of different kinds of uh, content, you can just know exactly how many you have. Now, these aren't ones that have been created for you. These are ones that you will create yourself and you can name them anything you like. So I can come to the top here where it says add and create tag here. But first, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually tag my tracks. I'll highlight the ones that I want. So say I've uploaded these three tracks. And say, for example, these are all pop tracks from the 2000s. Maybe I'm doing a pop related show and I want to just identify how many of a certain maybe subgenre I've got. So I can highlight them here. Now, these are all the tags that I've made. Uh, I've already got a pop one here, but I would like to separate these a little bit more and maybe call them pop 2000s, something like that. Type in anything you like, click on add. And when you do, it will then create that tag and assign it to those tracks. And what it's done is it's sort of placed it into a folder. So if I click on the tags option here on the left, what you'll see is a list of all the tags you've made and also how many tracks you have associated with each tag. So I have pop 2000s, I have three tracks. So it's very beneficial to actually tag all of your tracks because it just really helps you with not only organizing, but also building your playlists. You can actually use these tags to help build your shows and give your shows an element of randomization and shuffle. So if I go right to the top here, I have a 90s tag and I have over 150 tracks tagged as that. So I'll show you how, it, how these tags work when building my playlist very, very shortly. Before I get there though, couple of features. So we have our recordings feature here. Now what this is, is this is the ability to record your live shows. So you can actually schedule a live event to record. And as soon as you come off air, you will have an entire MP3 file of that show. So I have a show here from a few days ago that is uh, two hours in, uh, in length. I can take this file, I could place it into a playlist and repeat it. So if this was a breakfast show that people missed this morning, they can listen to it again this evening, perhaps. But other ways you can use it is you'll open up the Actions tab here. You could download the recording. 
you know, if you want to just archive it on your own personal computer. We actually have a sister company, podcast.co, which is a fantastic way to almost instantly upload any talk shows you have and upload them and make them available as a podcast. And once a show is available as a podcast, it can be streamed across the likes of Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn. And it's a way of opening up your radio shows to potentially millions of listeners that otherwise wouldn't have found your radio show. So it's a great way of expanding the reach of your station. So podcasting is definitely something you should check out. And if you want more information on podcast.co in particular, you can reach our team uh, just via uh, an email, hello at podcast.co or just by reaching the website podcast.co and we also have a feature called published mix cloud so if you have a music show and you want to make it available on demand so the ability for people to listen to it anytime they like then create a mix cloud account integrate the two together and it means you can instantly upload a music show to mix cloud all you do is click on the option and it opens up the window enter in the information here and just instantly upload it there. It's incredibly quick and easy to do. And it uploads it directly from this page. You don't even need to go to Mixcloud or podcast.co to do that. So I'll show you how to record a show very, very soon. But let me go to the voice tracking here. What this is, is this is the ability to record vocal content directly into Radio.co. So it allows you to record um, up to 10 minutes of vocal content. So if you wanted to record uh, introductions to music that you're playing throughout your pre-recorded show, if you want to record a uh, an advert or a jingle, or you want to interview someone within 10 minutes. It's a great tool. It's a, basically a portable recording booth you'll always have access to every time you log into your account. And I'll show you how to actually record a voice track when I begin building my uh, playlist. But it's a fantastic tool, so yeah, yeah you're going to love how it looks. Relays. What this is, is this is the ability to save and then schedule an online feed from another online radio station. So there are two ways you could use this. If you have a maybe a friend who has their own online radio station, or there is a service out there that you, know, you would like to have some of their programs on your station as well. You will take the URL for their station, and this is what one may look like, and you can schedule it as one of your shows. And it means as soon as you schedule it, anything that's playing on this URL will also directly stream on your station as well. So it's a great way of syndicating content because you could do the same to other people. You can give them access to your station. Um, so this is just a great tool to use, whether it's, uh, you know, broadcasting programs from other shows or even if you have multiple stations and you want the same programs playing on all of them use it as a live relay schedule the show for real on one station broadcast it across all the others you may own talk shows now not to be confused you can do talk shows on all of our plans what this is is this is a more advanced more efficient tool a, a way really of doing your talk shows in this, you know, I'm recording this in July of 2021. We've been doing about 18 months so far of remote working and remote interviewing and talking to people. So this is a great way of kind of making the most of that. This is, this is a way of getting people remotely and recording them in the same room, the same online room, of course. So what you do is you will create a room. So I've got one here called Phil Demo. When you create this show, it also comes with its own unique invitation link. Now, I will send that to my guests or my co-hosts and they will click on that. And when they do, they'll be taken to a green room where they're waiting for me to invite them in. So they'll be able to see the name of the show, maybe some logos associated with it. And they can connect with any microphones they've got plugged into their computer or they can connect through a mobile phone as well. We always recommend using a, a computer where possible just for the ability to make it sound better through a microphone. But anyway, they will click on that link. Meanwhile, you will click on Start Session and you'll be able to see all of your guests waiting here. Allow access to your microphone and you can choose which one you want to use. So I don't want to use the internal mic on my computer. I want to use my audio interface here, my Scarlett 2i2, my focus right here. So I click on that. Now, I will wait for my callers here or my guests. When they're here, I invite them into the room. Once we're all here, I can click on Start Session and it will record up to 60 minutes. So it's a strictly pre-recorded tool. You can't use this for live broadcasting, but it's a way of really easily and conveniently recording a 60-minute roundtable discussion 
a podcast, an interview with someone. It's a formidable tool to use, and this is available in our gold and our pro plans. So our two highest plans will give you access to this tool. So if this does sound appealing to you, you will need to consider subscribing to one of those uh, two plans. But it's a fantastic tool to use very, very easily. And when you do record a show, you simply save it, and it will then be saved within your Radio.co account for you to easily place into a playlist or even download. So I'll show you how to uh, schedule one of those shows um, a little bit later. And then finally, in terms of features that we have here, we have our news bulletin builder. This is a fantastic tool. I always feel providing news elevates your station to a different level of professionalism, um, particularly if you're a community station. You know, if you want to launch a station for your small community, your local town or your city, then having a news feature available to your audience is a great way of just providing more uh, you know, information and entertainment. So what this feature does is this allows you to build a news package. So you will have an introduction to your news, an, an outro for your news, and you'll pick the actual news source. Now, the news source itself will need to be one that you have explicit permission to use. We're using this one just for illustration, but you will need your news source to feature a MP3 stream. It needs to strictly be an MP3 URL. The reason being is because an MP3 URL will always be overwritten. So for this example, I will enter this URL and uh, this URL in once. And every time it gets to the top of this hour, this news provider will update and overwrite that stream. So it means I only need to enter this new stream in once and it will always be uploaded and updated every single hour, all automatically. I don't need to do anything to do that. So put the news source in, put a bit of background audio if you want, you know, a bed underneath your stream. The intro here, um, it doesn't have to be music, of course. It can be a top of our jingle. It could be an, a, an advert. Maybe you have someone sponsoring your news. It's totally up to you. It's just a way of building an actual news package. Once you've built this, you need to then tell the software how frequently you want it to play. So you can have it playing every hour between specific hours, so 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. maybe, what days of the week you want them to play. So if I want it just to be a weekday service, I can turn Saturday and Sunday off. You can, of course, have it play all day and, of course, every day. And what this will do is this will automatically fade in at the top of every hour you've specified or every hour completely. This will always overwrite any pre-recorded programs you have. So if you have a playlist currently playing, it will fade out in favor of this new source fading in. And this particular feature is available in at least our silver plan. So if you do like this feature, you will need to subscribe to at least our silver plan to have access to it. Right, let's build a show. We've talked about the features enough. Let's actually build a show to start broadcasting. So to do that, come to playlists. Now, every show that isn't live needs to be built as a playlist. You will then build that playlist and tell the software what time you would like it to play. So I have a small collection of playlists I've made already. I have a breakfast show. Uh, I have a podcast show here, an R&B show. And I also have this, the default playlist. You will find you have a default playlist as well when you create your account. As soon as you create it, we will give it uh, you access to it. Now, your default playlist will be empty. It won't have any music or content in it as, at all. But the reason we give you this playlist is because we've actually built it to do a couple of important jobs. The main job it will do is it will actually automatically fade in during any gap in your schedule. So what that means is, although we give you the tools to build a 24-hour station, we don't expect you to, of course, have 24 hours of content to play every single day. So what the default playlist does is it will simply loop any content within it when you have nothing scheduled. So it's an incredibly easy way of managing your own 24 seven station with very little time and effort. Uh, or to, you know, if you want to add in any tracks, all you need to do is click on the edit button and place your tracks in that default playlist. You could even place every track you own in there and it will play those tracks in a specific order completely on loop. The other job it will do, it will automatically fade in when there's been a connection, a disconnection. So if you're hosting a live show and there's a power cut in your own home and you're taken off air, this will automatically rescue you. It will take over until you've reconnected. Now to build your own playlist, at the top here it says new playlist. Just call it anything you like. So I'll keep it nice and simple. I'll just call this one 
Phil's show. There we go. Nice and original. Uh, I'm going to give it a colour. I give it my favourite colour. Nice royal blue. And I'm going to click on add. Now, when you click on add, it takes you to your playlist builder. So here you can see the name of your show and its current length. Now, to add tracks to your playlist, all you need to do is click on the plus button next to any track you've uploaded, and it will automatically open up on your tracks. So this will display everything that you have uploaded through this method here. So I'm going to work my way down this list, just clicking on the plus button, and you can see as soon as I do, it jumps straight into my playlist. I can, of course, search for specific tracks here to play, or like I say, I can just select anything I like in any old order, like so. With every track you add, the duration changes, so you know exactly how long this particular show is going to be. Now, you don't need to add your tracks into any particular order, because once they're on this side, you can move them around with the mouse. Get it all together, just like that. Get everything in the right order for you. And you see, it's so quick, so easy, so efficient. So, building a playlist is incredibly well, it's not time consuming at all. It's incredibly stress free and quick. And when I've decided I've got everything I want, I know exactly, you know, how long my show is going to be. I know what tracks are going to play. And most importantly, I know what order those tracks are going to play. Now, all of these tracks will abide by what we call a crossfade. And you can set a default crossfade across all of your pre-recorded shows. And what crossfade is, is it's just a, uh, a period of time where your tracks overlay. So, uh, by default, I believe we set it to three seconds. So that just means during the course of three seconds, these tracks will nicely crossfade into each other. So these aren't going to simply stop and start really awkwardly. All these tracks will just nicely flow into one another. So it sounds really, really nice. Now, of course, if I click on save, I could schedule that playlist very easily and I'm, I'm quite happy with this. But there are other things you can add to your playlist as well. First of all, there are tags. So as I mentioned before, you can tag all of your tracks for organization, but you can also use them to build your playlists. So what I'll do is I will take this 90s tag I mentioned earlier, and I will drag it into my playlist. Now what this does is this will play a random track that's associated with that tag. So I had over 150 tracks I tagged as 90s. So track three in this show, the software will play one at random for me. I could play another random 90s track here, or a random acoustic track. And what the software will do is it will recognize every track it's played within that tag. So even if I put the same tag in back to back, it will always be random, permitted I've got plenty of tracks in those tags. It will play every track within that tag once before any repeat or play, you know, for a second or third time. And the least amount of time and effort you need to spend building a playlist can actually be this. So I could get rid of all of this and just build a playlist that's entirely made up of one single tag. So if I wanted to do a 90s hour, I could simply place a 90s tag, schedule that for one hour, and for one hour it will just keep simply playing a back-to-back -back random 90s track. So permitted I've got plenty of tracks tagged as 90s, that one hour is going to be completely random. And like I said, you can add in as many tags as you like, and they'll just nicely flow into each other just like this. It's also particularly good if you have lots of jingles or adverts that are pretty generic and you're not bothered about which ones are playing. I always recommend maybe tagging your jingles. So, you know, I know I want to jingle in between these tracks, you know, but I, you know, I don't really care which jingle they are. I just know I would like one to play. So this is a very, very easy way of doing it. Of course, you won't know the duration of the show because the software doesn't know what tracks it's going to play until it starts playing, but a very easy alternative way of building a show. Now, as for other content, you'll find the Recordings tab. This is where you'll find all of those shows you've set to record, and I'll show you how to schedule it to record uh, in a moment. But uh, I'm going to take this two-hour-long file that I recorded uh, just over a week ago. I'm going to take it and drag it into my playlist. And that's how you repeat a show, it's as simple as that. Move that recording over. And again, you could build a playlist that just contains that one simple track and schedule it as one show. Talk shows, if you have used our talk show feature, you will find all of your completed talks here. And again, works exactly the same way, take that recording and move it across. And that's how you play and schedule one of those talk shows or interviews that you've done. And then finally, voice tracking. As I said, this will let you record vocal content up to 10 minutes in length. And to record it, just click on this microphone button here. 
And what it do is it open up the option to add your voice tracking here. Click on this red microphone button. There we go. And it will ask you in the exact same way it did that talk show, you know, uh, what microphone, what input do I want to use? Click on this option. Click on where it says this. Or, well, it's not, yours might not necessarily say that. This is just the one I'm going to use. This is my uh, audio interface. So anything that you have plugged into your computer, you know, a USB microphone, a desk, an interface, will be an option to select. So I'll select this. And, yep, yeah, I'm ready to record. So I'll click on this red microphone button a second time and it will start counting backwards from 10 minutes. So what it's doing now is it's currently recording everything that I'm saying through my microphone. So I could use this time to, uh, you know, record an introduction to one of my songs or one of my uh, old shows. Maybe the show I'm repeating is a little out of date, so I want to record a new introduction for it. Uh, I can record jingles, adverts. It's just a portable recording booth that you always have access to every time you log in. So use it for as long or as you know short as you want. It's also particularly good for DJs. You know, you can invite DJs to do live shows on your station. And if they're not confident in going live or you're not confident in them going live, why not invite them to do the voice tracks instead? Either build them a playlist or they build it themselves and they record pre-recorded voice links instead. Right, I'm happy with this. I'm going to click on stop. I'm going to leave it just a couple of seconds just for it to create. And I'm going to uh, listen back to it to make sure it sounds OK. If I like what I hear, great. If I don't, clear recording and start again. Uh, if I do like it, though, I just need to give it uh, a name. So I'll call this one Fill Show Intro. Click on Create. Give it a second or two, and it will then save your voice track. And by default, it will place it at the bottom here. But of course, if that's not where you want it, simply move it. And there we go. Record as many of these voice tracks as you like. They do take up the storage space allowance that you have, but you know it's an MP3 file, so it won't actually take up that much room. But record as many as you like, scatter them throughout, just to give off the impression your pre-recorded show that may have just contained music now actually has a personality behind it, and it makes people think it's a live show that you're doing. Right, I'm happy with this playlist, so I'm going to save it just like so. And I'm going to go to the schedule and actually get it on air. So when you click on schedule, this is what you will see. You will see the days of the week along the top, times down by the side. And as I scroll down through my schedule, you will see everything that I have playing on my station. And in fact, it's just two shows I have. I have a live show 9 till 12 with Alan, and I also have a live show 6 till 9 with Graham. Now, if you remember, I mentioned about that default playlist that you can create, or, or rather we give it to you, but you can fill it with uh, whatever you like. But that default playlist will always play anytime there is a gap in your schedule. And there just so happens to be a large gap every afternoon on my station between 12 and 6. So what will happen is that will be automatically filled by that default playlist. I don't need to do anything. The software is built to do it automatically. So Alan has a show here, 9 till 12. As he's about to finish, as he's reaching the final couple of seconds, the software knows nothing's coming up next. So it will automatically crossfade that default playlist. So as Alan fades out after his show, the default playlist will start and fade in instead. And it will then continue playing for as long as it needs to, which in this case is going to be for six hours. It will also do it again between nine and nine. So it's going to play it again for 12 hours on loop. And the software will always fill in any amount of time that you uh, that you need it to. So it doesn't matter if my default playlist was one hour long. In this case, it will play it on loop six times. It will always fill in the time it needs to, permitted you've got content in, in there, of course. So it doesn't actually look like it, but that is a 24 hour station. It's just some of it looks a little bare. Now, some people actually leave their schedules completely blank and they build one single default playlist and they update it periodically. And you could do that too. It's a very, very easy way of running it. But of course, you can schedule specific shows as well. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, select the day and the time that I want to schedule a show for. So this slightly grayed out box shows me what day I'm on, which is in this case Thursday. And I'm going to click on two and I'm going to drag it down to the time I want it to finish. So I'll do two till four in this case. Now, when you let go of the mouse, you just need to confirm the details regarding this show. So first of all, my show starts at 2 p.m. It runs for two hours and it therefore finishes at 4 p.m. 
great. Now, currently, I've only got it scheduled for Thursday, but I can, if I wanted to, schedule it for multiple days across the week at this same time. So you don't need to schedule shows every single day yourself. You know, we can do that for you. So click on Saturday. It will schedule it two till four on Thursday and Saturday and next Tuesday, Sunday or every day. You can also repeat it on a weekly basis as well. So if you knew you wanted the same shows to go on air at the same time, same days for the next I don't know, two years, click on week and then choose a random date within the next two years and it will schedule it up until that date. Now, I won't go that extreme. I'm going to do it slightly less, but I'm still going to schedule it for, you know, maybe a little over six months or so. So I'll select, yeah, the 31st of January, 2022. So it's going to schedule it for more or less six months ahead. Great. Now I need to confirm to the software, what sort of event is this? I've decided the times and the days, but I don't know what show this is going to be. So click on the advanced tab and you'll see this. So first of all, we have event type. Basically means what type of show is this going to be? So we have playlist, which as the name suggests, I'm telling the software, I want to play a playlist on air. Now what playlist is that? Well, that's decided here where it says playlist. Click on this drop down option and you will see every playlist you have created here. So I'm going to select Phil Show. And this just means I'm confirming with the software I'm going to play the Phil Show playlist two till four every day, every week for the next six months or so. And if I'm happy with that, I'm going to click on create event, give it a second or two, and there we go, it's scheduled almost instantly. That's six months worth of content all ready to go. This will automatically fade in at two and automatically fade out at four. And you don't need to do anything else. You've built that playlist, you've told the software what time you want it to play, and the software will do it completely automated. You know, you don't even need your computer on or even an internet connection because, you know, we power it for you. And that's how easy it is to do a pre-recorded show. Just upload your content, build a playlist and then tell the software what time you want it to play. And of course, these gaps will be filled by that default playlist as well. So you've still got a 24 hour station, despite it not looking like one. Now, that's how you do a pre-recorded show. What if you want to do a live show? It's still very, very simple to do. I'm going to click on this event and where it says event type, you can also select live DJ. Now, when you do that, you'll see another drop down option with people's names on. And this is where you'll see everyone that's associated with your account, because each of our subscription plans has a certain number of people you can invite onto your account. And with that access, when you've invited somebody, they'll be able to log in remotely, host a live show and then log back out. You know, they can just log in remotely and host a live show on your station. So I'll show you how to invite people uh, towards the end. But first of all, I'll click on this option and I can see everyone that I have on my station. So I'll select myself being a, an egotistical maniac on this demonstration. So I'm going to select me, Phil. I'm going to record the broadcast. So when it's finished, I will have an MP3 file that I could turn into a podcast or just repeat later on in the day or the week. Now, I'm happy with this information, but I can, if I wanted to, get rid of any days or change the times. Uh, you, rather than you know dragging out the times of your show, you can actually select specific durations, you know, for the you know down by the minute. So we'll change the show slightly. Uh, we'll get rid of Saturday and Tuesday, and we'll keep the the same uh, length of time here. So yeah, I'm happy with my uh, my show and the changes I've made, and I'm going to click on update event. And you can make as many changes to your event as you like. Even if it is scheduled so far in advance, you can make as many changes to it. If you've got a DJ on air and you're not happy with what they're doing, you can kick them off air as well. You know, you have full control to run the station however you like. So now you can see live DJ Phil from 2 to 3.55. And Saturday has been removed here. So you can see here live DJ Phil. That means the software is expecting me, Phil, to be logged in I'm ready to begin broadcasting. If someone else tries to log in, like my colleague uh, Dave, if he tries to log in, he won't be able to go live because the software isn't expecting him. It's only expecting me. If I don't log in on time, a backup playlist will play instead. Or if I disconnect through to technical issues, a backup playlist will always play. And you can see exactly what that playlist will be. And in fact, I did mention it being the default playlist, but actually you can select any playlist you like to be your default playlist. Any playlist selected here when you're choosing a live DJ will be your backup playlist instead. 
as demonstrated here. So I'm going to change it to the classic rock playlist, and this will now be my new backup playlist. So that will play in the event of something going wrong. And you can see here, recording has been enabled. So as soon as my show finishes, you know, give it a second or so, and I will have that MP3 file of my entire show. And that's how easy it is to do a live show. Simply, uh, you know, tell the software who's going live and at what time. And as long as that person does log in on time, they will go live completely automated. They will fade in at two and fade out at the time that they're supposed to finish. And I mentioned before, you know, you can delete events, you can edit them. So to delete it, just click on delete event. You can delete all the events like so here. And there we go. And if you have a live relay that you want to choose as well, all you do is select the live relay option here. Select that URL that you've saved, click on create. And in a very similar way, you can see here there is a relay. If that relay goes down because that studio has gone off air for any reason, your audience and you, for that matter, are still protected because you will have a backup playlist. So you are always protected against technical difficulties, whether they're your fault or someone else's. OK, so the most important thing on this tour is obviously how on earth are people going to listen to this radio station? So to answer that, I'm going to go to the Listen tab. Now, there are a couple of different ways people can listen to your station right out of the box. First of all, there is this. This is a unique URL that's automatically given to you when you create your account. You can share this on social media. You could maybe email it to people, but this will never change during the course of your subscription. So you can share it as much as possible. And when people click on this, it just takes them to a blank page on their browser tab or their computer. So if I just click on this now, hopefully you'll be able to see this. If I just click on it, I can press play and my station starts streaming like so. Bit of Lady Gaga there. Um, and yeah, you can just get rid of it like so. So as long as you subscribe to at least our bronze plan, then people can actually click on this from their mobile devices as well. Now, if you have your own website, uh, you know, or if the website is something you want to have eventually, what you can do is create a web player like so. Now, what this will do is this will allow you to uh, create a uh, a player which represents something to do with your station. It gives it more visibility. You know, it's actually something to look at while you're listening to your station. So this can come in different shapes and sizes. I've got a lot of the same ones here, but it's just to give you a nice little wallpaper effect, I guess. Um, so here it comes in, you know, different shapes, different sizes, uh, different colors, of course. You can have it display cover art of any music you're playing or uh, artwork of your branding or maybe you're playing a podcast or a particular host wants their own unique artwork for their show you know it will display it as long as you've added that piece of artwork and that information to your schedule it will display it and all you do is create this however you like from the add player button here it literally takes about 30 seconds it just asks you a series of questions uh, you can also set it so it pops out into its own window. So if people leave your website, they're still listening to your station. And then all you do is click on copy embed code, paste that onto your website, and anyone who visits your website will see something that looks like this. If you want to give them something else to look at as well, if I go back to my schedule, we've also created a schedule widget. Now, at the time of recording, this is still under uh, our beta stage. Um, it's still a relatively new feature, so we're just ironing out a couple of creases, but it works fantastically well. So what you do is create, click on Create Widget, and you'll find something that looks like this. So what this does is this displays a schedule for your entire uh, week of programming. It will display all of your shows, any live shows, any pre-recorded shows across different days of the week, you know, just like this. Uh, you can have it as a light and dark mode, as demonstrated there. You can have it as a schedule that spreads out across the entirety of your web page or a fixed size, like so. You can obviously customize the logo, the color scheme, the messaging there, but it's just a, something else to, so people can have something to look at while they're listening to your station. And it was one of our most requested features, so it's fantastic that we've been able to, to bring it to life here. And again, that will take maybe 30, 60 seconds to put together. Now, going back to listening, there are other ways people can listen to your station that expand the reach, but also, you know, the efficiency of people listening. So if I just jump to our add-ons here. Now, if you are interested in having your own dedicated iPhone app and Android app for your station, then 
hey presto, we can create one for you. This will be an entirely white labeled uh, mobile app for your station. So white labeled means it doesn't feature any Radio.co branding on it at all. It doesn't allude to any other station. It's purely yours. You will decide the name of your app and any logos and artwork associated with it. Even this description of the app, you know, what it what it reads like on those particular stores. And these apps will be available worldwide across the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. They do come at an extra monthly charge. As you can see here, it's an extra $15 per month each. Uh, that only applies if you subscribe to our light, our bronze, or our silver plans. They are $15 a month extra each, or £12 per month each. Uh, if you subscribe to our gold plan, you will find an Android app and actually an Alexa skill added onto your account. And if you uh, subscribe to our pro plan, you'll find both of these plus the iPhone app. Again, all at no extra cost on one of those plans. Uh, to actually build the apps, it's incredibly simple. All you do is follow a step-by-step -step guide. I, for one in particular, I'm not a mobile app developer, but obviously good news. Uh, I'm sure you aren't either. And yeah, all you do is follow this step-by-step -step guide. So you can see here, all you do is decide the name of your app, what artwork you want, what color schemes, how you want it to look, uh, links to social media pages, websites, follow the instructions, submit it to us, and we'll get them built, uh, reviewed, and released for you. Uh, they do take a little bit of time, so we always say the sooner you submit them to us, the quicker we'll begin building and hopefully releasing them. But you can expect maybe tops of 21, 28 business days in you know really busy periods of the year, um, You know that amount of time to, to build and release your apps. But the sooner you build them, the sooner, uh, sooner you know they can be released. The Android app process is exactly the same. Just follow the step-by-step -step guide. Tell us what you want it to look like. Uh, and the Alexa skill, as I mentioned earlier, you can build an Alexa skill. And again, this is white labeled. It's a skill unique to your station. And it, Alexa doesn't introduce it as from Radio.co or any other stations. It's a command strictly just for your station. You would decide the name of the skill, how you want it to be pronounced, and Alexa can even give you a little tagline for your station as well. And this can be added onto your account, again, for an extra $10 a month or £8 a month onto your account. And with all of these add-ons, they can be removed and added on anytime you like, as often as you want. If you want to build a website through us, if you don't have one already, you can also subscribe to our website builder for £12 a month or uh, so $12 a month or £10 a month here. And we give you all the tools needed to build your own website. And we even give you a free domain name if you don't have one already. OK, so statistics. This is how you monitor the, uh, the performance of your station. So we'll give you the ability to track your audience across any time from the last hour to the last 60 days. So I'll get a little bit more information here. I'm going to click on the last 30 days, and this will display everything to do with my station within that amount of time. So over the last 30 days, I know how many unique listeners and total listeners. Uh, a popular question is, what is the difference between these? Unique listeners is, is actual people who have listened to your station. So over the last 30, th uh, 30 days, nearly 1,600 people have listened to my station. However, out of those 1,600 people, this is how many times they've collectively listened. So that's how many actual listeners, that's how many listens, if that makes sense. Peak listeners, the maximum number of people who listened at the same time. Listening time, you know, how long on average people are spending listening to my station. But we'll also give you more in-depth details such as where in the world your audience is based. So, you know, your station is available worldwide over the internet. Anyone has the ability to find it. So these are my most popular countries here. Quite an eclectic collection there, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, how, you know, how people are listening. So what web browsers, Android, Google Chrome, Safari, uh, what platforms, you know, are they listening from their desktop computer, a TV app, smartphone, tablets, anything to do with how and where people are finding your station, we're there to show you. We'll also show you real time stats. So if I click on real time, you can see exactly who's listening to your station right at this very second. So Currently, I have uh, one audience member from Bournemouth in the UK. You can see how they're listening, when they started listening, and even how much bandwidth they're using up. These people can be kicked and banned at your heart's content. But it's a great way if you're doing a live show to find out exactly where your live audience is based. So this is a really, really cool feature.
We have historical data. So this will just show you that overview I showed you before, but more in a, a, a more as a, as a graphical way. It will just show you a nice little, um, uh, a bit, bit of a better image, I guess, of, of how your station is doing. But the, I guess the most interesting part of this section, uh, when it does eventually load up, it's got a lot of data to load up, um, is actually the average listeners per segment. Particularly useful if you have advertisers and you want to know the busiest times of day for your station to you know to get the most effective ad campaign. Uh, and then we also have TTSL. This is total time spent listening. Um, so what this does is this calculates the total number of hours people have listened to your station on a daily basis. This information can actually be found up to the next uh, last 12 months. So you can have a full year of data available just to download and uh, archive you know for your records. And then finally, we have historical data here. So as you can see, what this does is this gives you a, uh, a graphical version of that overview I showed you first. This just, you know, gives you something a bit more appealing. I think you can see exactly how your station is doing and your audience, how they're um, fluctuating here, uh, even the bandwidth usage. So you know exactly how much data is being used for your station. But the most, in, uh, I guess the most interesting information you can get here is this, the average listeners per segment. This in particular is really good if you have advertisers you know, on your station and you want their adverts to play at the most effective times of day. So you know, if you have a commercial, you want to get the most amount of listeners, this will tell you where those listeners are listening to your station you know, uh, most, um, you know, most of the time. So you know, it breaks down in different periods of time. So it seems here the afternoon on my station is the most popular across the board. So what time of day is that? It's between one and seven. So I may want to put my adverts strictly within that time. And if you want something a bit more defined, so you want to get the exact hour that's the most popular, you will be able to get that information, you know, from narrowing this time period down to the last 24 hours, you'll be able to see, there we go, I had more listeners here, uh, you know, within this uh, last 24 hours. So I'm going to put my station here at 9pm in the evening, as an example. Uh, okay, so reports. This is primarily used for licensing purposes. Licensing is perhaps the most uh, frequently asked question we have. What is it and where do I get it from? So if you plan to play copyrighted material on your station, a broadcast license is strongly recommended. It basically, having a license, basically allows you to play whatever it is that you like on your station. Because with that license, your artists are getting paid royalties. You, you basically got the legal thumbs up, to, you know, to, to broadcast exactly how and what you want. Now, we don't include licensing currently in our platform. So we do strongly advise you get seeking it and getting it uh, independently. You can find more information about licensing in our um, on our website, or just type in radio.co licensing, and we've got a great number of articles there. So what you will need to do is pick a licensing organization based in the country you are broadcasting uh, from. You will pay a yearly fee, and through that fee, they will pay out your artists. But in order for them to do that, they will need to know who you've uh, who you've played, so they know who to who needs to get paid. So this is where you come. You come to your report track summary, and I guess typically you may want to get the last thirty days of, of data. One thing to note: even if your licensing organisation asks for reports every three six months, maybe. Do make a habit of downloading these reports maybe every 30 days uh, because once the 60 day mark has passed, we don't have access to this information anymore. So I'm just loading up the last 30 days of information here. And what it's going to do is display all the artists that I've played similarly here just over the last 30 days. So I'll be able to see everything that's been played, how many times each track has played and how many people actually uh, actually listen to it. It's gone this month as well instead. So there we go. So this month, you can see exactly how many tracks have played here. I can click on download. I, that information will be downloaded as a CSV file, which I could then pass on to the licensing organization I'm working with. Uh, it's also particularly good, again, for advertisers. If you want to know how many times pe uh, an advert was played and also how many people listen to it, this is where you come. Say this was an advert. I know how many times it's played, how many people were actually affected by it. So again, good information to uh, to start earning some revenue for your station. 
Settings, this is generally a place for you to have a little explore around, but as a general overview, this is where you choose the name and the look for your station. You can call your station anything you like and you can rebrand it if you have a change of heart later on as well. Just come here to your settings. Uh, our broadcast settings, this is where you adjust the sound of your station, such as how long that crossfade is going to be. You can have it as a maximum of 10 seconds or get rid of it entirely here. At live anytime, that's a feature for the owner of the account, which could be you. This just means you can go live anytime you like. You don't actually need to schedule yourself for a broadcast. You can go live you know, whenever you want. And your streaming quality. So all of our plans let you broadcast to a really high quality 192 kbps it's classed the cd quality of sound it's really crisp and really clear and in fact for a bit of a comparison a bit of context you know if you're used to listening to fm stations or even dab stations they actually broadcast at a very very low quality so you know if you want to broadcast higher than that it's incredibly simple to do and it sounds very very good uh, if you subscribe to our pro plan however that's our top plan you can actually broadcast up to 320 kbps for a really really astonishing pro studio sound and if you want people to listen on mobile devices as long as you subscribe to at least the bronze plan you can turn this on we have security measures, we have geoprotection. This allows you to protect your stream from certain countries. So if you only wanted your station to be available in the US, for example, you would come to geoprotection. I want to allow only listeners from the following countries. So that means if I try to listen to this station from the UK, I will be blocked. On the flip side of that, if you wanted certain countries not to be able to listen to your station, you can instead decide to block them. So that will just mean only listeners from the US uh, can't listen to my station. We have Ripper protection. This just protects your station from the most notorious torrents and uh, streaming tools that steal stations and bandwidth. So turn that on. We have advanced features such as separation rules. What that means is it allows you to set how frequently a particular artist or album can play. So I, for example, have a lot of Bob Marley tracks on my station. If I you know, only wanted him to play maybe once every three hours a day, I can set that from here. Uh, we have integrations. So as I mentioned before, we have our sister company, podcast.co. You can connect it up together and instantly upload your podcasts. Twitter can automatically tweet out any new tracks that you play. Uh, sometimes Twitter can regard it as spamming, so make sure it's not tweeting out every single track, but, you know, a little, a little less frequently. Uh, we have a great integration with Zapier. If you're not familiar with Zapier, it's basically an app that sends out several commands to other apps and software. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a middleman, middle person software. Um, by connecting it to Zapier with us, we'll actually allow you to connect to Dropbox and Google Drive as other ways of uploading uh, media. Mixcloud. This will allow you to connect to Mixcloud accounts. So you can instantly upload your uh, your completed uh, recorded uh, music shows. And we also have TuneIn here. Funny thing about TuneIn is they're not currently accepting new submissions to their uh, directory. So if you do want your station to be available on TuneIn, unfortunately, currently it's not possible. You can fill out a form on their website, and when they do reconsider, you could be added on. This is, of course, time of speaking, July 2021. But if you have an old station uh, or, or a current station that you want to move over to Radio.co and you currently have a TuneIn account, you can simply enter that information here and link it to your new Radio.co stream. And then finally, billing. Anything to do with what you're paying for and how you're paying for it can be adjusted here. Uh, and you can actually upgrade and downgrade your plan anytime you like by just clicking on the change plan option here. And if you're paying monthly and you'd like to subscribe annually to save a little bit of money in the long run, you can do that as well. And then the final thing is users. This is how you invite people onto your account. Now, everyone who has access to your account will be able to log in remotely, host a live show, and log back out. But some of the roles you can give people allow them to do a little bit more. They could help you upload content, build shows, do voice tracking. So each of the roles does have different levels of uh, restrictions and you can find out what they are by clicking on the roles and opening up. What does a music controller do? This will show you what, what they can and can't do. So to invite someone, click on invite a user, enter their name. So if it was me, Phil, Enter my email address, 
what role. Uh, a DJ will allow someone to um, you know, log in remotely and host a live show. A DJ can see how many people are listening, whilst a guest DJ can't. So if you want to keep your audience numbers a secret, I would give them guest DJ access. Station manager, they can do anything they want in the exact same way as the owner. And a music controller restricts people from accessing settings, but they can broadcast live and upload and schedule their own shows. But we'll just do DJ for now. Click on invite. That person will then get an email invitation and they'll follow those instructions to get their own unique login in details. And that just means once you've invited me, I can log in from any computer from anywhere in the world and go live when I've been scheduled on your station. So as long as I've got a Windows or Mac computer and of course an internet connection, I can log in from my computer from anywhere in the world and go live. It's just as easy as that. Following suit with the rest of this demonstration, which shows you just how quick and easy it is to begin broadcasting. And the help doesn't end there. We've got lots available on our website, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. First of all, you can head to our help center. That's help.radio. Co for our extensive collection of help guides and tutorials covering everything you've just seen there and much, much more. We've also got our Radio.co University, again available from our homepage on our website. And finally, if you'd like to speak to a member of the team, then you can do. Send us an email via studio at radio.co. We're always here to help and offer our expert advice. And if you haven't done so already, then head to our pricing page to activate your free seven day trial. Take care and happy broadcasting. Hey, I'm James, founder of Radio.co. Before you go anywhere, I've got an interesting question for you. Do you know the difference between a radio station that launches and becomes very successful, gets lots of listeners and does very well, and a radio station that perhaps kind of doesn't launch very well and disappears within a few months, doesn't really get much attention. Well, I've put together a checklist which will illustrate to you in a very simple way the five key differences between radio stations that launch and do well versus radio stations that launch and kind of disappear. You can download your free copy over at radio.co slash checklist today. Find out exactly how you can make the most out of your radio station. That's radio.co slash checklist. Go and grab your free copy. I'll see you there.